Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. In the study of vibrational spectroscopy, one of the most important ideas that you will need is that of the harmonic oscillator. Now the harmonic oscillator system is that of a particle moving in a harmonic potential which I will tell you about and we want to study how this particle behaves by using the laws of quantum mechanics. So let us start at the beginning. Let us first understand what is a harmonic oscillator, in other words what is this harmonic potential. So for that consider a system like this where you have a small mass which is free to move on a frictionless surface that is this surface here and it is attached to a wall by a spring like this. Now if you take this mass and make displace it by x about its equilibrium position, so by equilibrium position I mean this position when the spring is not stretched or compressed and then if I stretch the mass by a distance x and leave it then the mass begins to oscillate back and forth and this oscillation is what is called harmonic motion. Now if you plot the motion of this particle as a function of time, so I am going to plot time in this direction and the amplitude of the motion, then the particle initially has an amplitude like that, then it comes down, it has an amplitude in this direction, it goes up it, and it oscillates back and forth like this about this equilibrium position. This motion is what is called harmonic motion and the, and the force that the spring exerts on the mass F is, e is equal to minus k times x that is the force is proportional to the displacement that the particle is has with respect to the undisplaced position of the spring. The corresponding potential energy is Vx is equal to half kx squared and the classical motion of this particle is given by x as a function of t is equal to x0 cosine of omega t where omega which is the frequency of the oscillation is related to the spring constant. So k is called the spring constant and omega is related to the spring constant as square root of k over m. So the classical motion is given by this x as a function of time and the graph of that is what you see here the total classical energy of the spring total energy is half k x0 squared where x0 is the maximum displacement of the spring. The total energy is a constant and is a sum of kinetic energy and potential energy. So when the particle is moving fast the energy is primarily kinetic energy and when the particle is turning around and it is slowing down then the energy is primarily potential energy. So this total energy can be written as a sum of kinetic energy and potential energy and classically this is k x0 squared by 2 sin squared omega t this is the kinetic energy plus 
cosine squared omega by 2 which is the potential energy. If we graph the potential energy as a function of time, the graph will look something like this. Initially, it is all potential energy and then it decreases again its potential energy and decreases. So, this is potential energy and the kinetic energy is initially 0 and then that increases when the potential energy becomes 0 and then it oscillates like this. So, this is the kinetic energy and the graphs are, are here for the kinetic energy and here for the potential energy and you see that the total energy which is the sum of the potential and kinetic energy that is constant. This is the classical picture of the motion of the particle in a harmonic potential. So, what we have on this page is the classical mechanical picture. Our goal is to understand the quantum mechanical description of the harmonic oscillator and that is what we are going to look at in very great detail now. Our goal is to obtain a quantum mechanical description of a particle moving in a harmonic potential. More precisely, we want to find the wave function of a particle so, psi of x comma t which is moving in the harmonic potential that is moving with potential v of x is equal to half k x squared. So, for this we have to write the Hamiltonian for this system and then solve its Schrodinger equation. The Hamiltonian for the system h is the kinetic energy operator plus the potential energy operator. The kinetic energy is simply the one dimensional kinetic energy operator which is minus h bar squared by 2 m d squared by d x squared and the potential energy is half k x squared. Now, our goal is to find a psi x comma t which satisfies the Schrodinger equation i h bar del psi by del t is equal to h of psi. This is the Schrodinger equation. We have seen in the lectures on the basics of quantum mechanics that if the Hamiltonian does not depend on time, which is the case here then solving the Schrodinger equation is equivalent to solving the eigenvalue equation of the Hamiltonian h psi is equal to E psi since h does not depend on time. So, let us look at the solution of this equation h psi is equal to E psi where h is this Hamiltonian minus h bar squared by 2 m d squared by d x squared plus half k x squared and let us go and derive what are the actual Eigen functions and Eigen values of this Schrodinger equation. Our goal is to solve the following Schrodinger equation minus h bar squared by 2 m d squared by d x squared plus half k x squared psi of x is equal to E times psi of x. We note that k is equal to m omega squared from the classical solution of the harmonic oscillator. We also see that this is consistent with k having dimensions of mass by time square because half k x squared has dimension of 
energy. which is mass length square divided by time square. So, since x squared has dimension of length squared, k must have dimension of mass by time squared. So, taking k to be m omega squared, we write the Schrodinger equation as minus h bar squared by 2 m d squared by d x squared plus m omega squared by 2 x squared psi x is equal to e times psi of x. We need to find a psi x which satisfies this equation. To obtain solutions of the Schrodinger equation that is to obtain the value of psi of x that satisfies this equation we will use the method of ladder operators and for that let me begin by defining a dimensionless coordinate q which is related to x in the following manner. So, q is equal to square root of m omega by h bar times x. Let us verify that this q is indeed dimensionless. So, if you take the dimensions of all the other quantities, ma m has dimensions of mass, omega has dimensions of inverse of time, h has dimensions of, so this is units of joule uh, second, so uh, dimensions are mass length squared time inverse. So, you see that inside the square root the mass in the numerator and denominator cancel and the time inverse in the numerator and denominator cancel and you are left with 1 over L squared square root which is 1 over L. So, the dimension of this entire square root is L inverse and the dimension of the x is L. So, the dimension of this entire q is dimensionless. We will now write the Schrodinger equation in terms of q and to do that we need to write d squared by d x squared in terms of q. Let us start by writing d by dx in terms of q. So, d by dx is equal to d by dq and dq by dx and we know that dq by dx is equal to square root of m omega by h bar. So, d by dx is equal to square root of m omega h bar d by d q. d squared by d x squared is another derivative with respect to x which gives d q by d x and then a sec another derivative with respect to q and again we write the expression of d q by d x as square root of m omega m omega by h bar. So, finally, we have d squared x by d squared by d x squared is equal to m omega h bar d squared by d q squared. Using this expression, we will now write the Hamiltonian in terms of the dimensionless coordinate q and solve the Schrodinger equation for the dimensionless coordinate. And in the end, we can always come back to the coordinate x by using the conversion factor. The reason we use the dimensionless coordinate is to simplify the math which will follow in the ladder operator approach and we will understand this in detail as we proceed. Using the relation of q and x which is m omega by h bar x and d squared by d x squared which is m omega h bar d squared by d q squared. In terms of q, the Schrodinger equation becomes 
h bar omega by 2 minus d squared by d q squared plus q squared psi of q is equal to e of psi of q. We notice that in the Schrodinger equation this operator has the form minus alpha squared plus beta squared which as you know can be factorized as minus alpha plus beta and alpha plus beta. So, just as an experiment let us write an operator which is h bar omega this h bar omega here and whatever is in the brackets as 1 over square root of 2 minus d by d q plus q multiplied by 1 over square root of 2 d by d q plus q. Now, if we expand this out we get h bar omega by 2 minus d squared by d q squared plus q squared and the additional terms minus h bar omega by 2 d by d q times q multiplied by q times d by d q. So, here we have the operator like in the Hamiltonian and additionally we have a operator which we see here. So, the question is what is the value of this operator? Let us try to determine this d by d q times q operating on f of q minus q d by d q operating on f of q gives and you have to use the chain rule here f of q plus q times f prime of q minus q f prime of q. Now, these two will cancel and you get this to be simply f of q. So, the operator here is nothing but just 1 and this entire op operator a hat that we have written here is effectively h the Hamiltonian minus h bar omega by 2. Now, if we give some special names to the operators here and here. So, we call the first one as b dagger and this other operator as b then we can see that the Hamiltonian which is the operator a plus h bar omega by 2 is equal to h bar omega b dagger b plus h bar omega by 2 that is h bar omega b dagger b plus half. So, effectively we have written the Hamiltonian operator in terms of two new operators which we have defined which are b dagger and b and we will see how this will help us actually solve the Schrodinger equation h psi is equal to e psi. Our goal now is to solve h psi is equal to e psi where h is written in terms of the two new operators which we have defined b dagger and b. So, this is h bar omega b dagger b plus half. To do this it is helpful to derive a commutation relation between these two new operators b dagger and b. So, we want a commutation relation between b and b dagger. By commutation relation we mean what is the value of the commutator b b dagger. So, this is the symbol of a commutator the square brackets and the commutator simply means b b dagger minus b dagger b. In general the commutation operator between 
two operators A and B is A B minus B A. So, in our case the commutation between B B dagger is written out here and if we write this explicitly in terms of the Q, this becomes B is D by D Q plus Q and the 1 over square root of 2 has been taken out as half outside and B dagger is minus D by D Q plus Q and we have minus half B dagger is minus D by D Q plus Q multiplied by D by D Q plus Q. When we expand this out, this becomes half minus D squared by D Q squared plus D by D Q Q minus Q D by D Q plus Q squared and plus D squared by D Q squared and plus D by D Q of Q minus Q D by D Q and minus Q squared. Several terms here cancel. So, for example, this first term cancels with this term and the Q squared term cancels with the minus Q squared term and furthermore this term D, Q, D by D Q times Q and D by D Q times Q appears twice and similarly this term here appears twice. So, we can write this B B dagger commutator as D by D Q Q minus Q D by D Q and this operator we have seen is simply equal to 1. We have just derived this in the previous slide. So, the final result we get is the commutator of B B dagger is equal to 1 which we will use in our derivation going ahead. Let us again write the eigenvalue equation for the Hamiltonian H psi is equal to E psi. So, H bar omega B dagger B plus half times psi is equal to E psi and we want to find what psi satisfies this equation. So, let us pre multiply or multiply from the left by B dagger on both sides of the equation. That gives H bar omega B dagger B dagger B plus B dagger by 2 psi is equal to E times B dagger of psi. B dagger is a linear operator and so I could write B dagger E of psi as E times B dagger of psi which is what I have here. Now, we notice in this equation that we have a B dagger operating on psi here and a B dagger operating on psi here, but on this term, but in this term we have B, B operating on psi. So, let us try to interchange the B dagger and B and for this we can use the commutation relation which we have just derived. which is B B dagger is equal to 1 or in other words B B dagger minus B dagger B is equal to 1 or B dagger B is equal to B B dagger minus 1. So, if I substitute this B dagger B here then I will get 
h bar omega b dagger b b dagger minus 1 which is simply b dagger plus b dagger by 2 psi is equal to e times b dagger of psi and this gives h bar omega b dagger b b dagger minus b dagger by 2 times psi is equal to e b dagger of psi and this gives h bar omega b dagger b minus half b dagger of psi is equal to e times b dagger of psi. If we want to make this operator on the left hand side look like the Hamiltonian operator, then we add from here you add h bar omega b dagger psi on both sides and this gives h bar omega b dagger b plus half b dagger psi is equal to e plus h bar omega b dagger psi. Now, this operator on the left hand side here is nothing but the Hamiltonian operator. So, we have Hamiltonian operating on b dagger psi gives e plus h bar omega b dagger of psi. This implies that if h psi is equal to e psi, then h of b dagger psi is equal to e plus h bar omega b dagger psi. So, if psi is an eigenfunction, then b dagger psi is also an eigenfunction. And if psi has eigenvalue e, then b dagger psi has eigenvalue e plus h bar omega. So, if you have an eigenfunction of the harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian, then operating with b dagger on that eigenfunction gives another eigenfunction, but with an eigenvalue which is increased by h bar omega. So, this operator b dagger is raising the energy of the eigenfunction and giving another eigenfunction and this b dagger operator is sometimes called the ladder up operator. To summarize up to now we have seen that the Hamiltonian of the harmonic oscillator is h bar omega b dagger b plus half and we have seen that if psi is an eigenfunction with eigenvalue e then b dagger psi is also an eigenfunction with eigenvalue e plus h bar omega. Now, if we consider this b dagger psi to be another eigenfunction let us say phi, then h phi is equal to e prime of phi and this implies that b dagger of phi is also an eigenfunction with eigenvalue e prime plus h bar omega that is b dagger of b dagger psi phi is just b dagger psi is also an eigenfunction with eigenvalue e prime is e plus h bar omega. 
So, the total eigenvalue is E plus h bar omega plus h bar omega. So, in summary B dagger B dagger psi is an eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian with eigenvalue E plus 2 h bar omega. We see that the operator B dagger operates uh, on an eigenfunction and gives another eigenfunction with eigenvalue increased by h bar omega. So, this suggests that the eigenvalues of the harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian are spaced by equal values and the spacing in each case is h bar omega. So, all of these are eigenvalues corresponding to different eigenfunctions and these are all obtained by operating the B dagger operator on one of these eigenfunctions. The question now is what is the lowest eigenvalue and what are the functional forms of these different eigenfunctions. Mm -hmm.